Woo, did y'all enjoy that? Amen. My gosh, what a powerful, what a powerful song. First Timothy chapter six. If you have your Bibles, First Timothy chapter six. Live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the Father. Mm, before we read the scripture, Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone who's in this house, and I thank you for everyone who's watching through the broadcast. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Woo, I thank you for the word that you have for us this morning. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I declare, I declare, Holy Spirit, that everyone who's watching through the broadcast, that they are excellent ground. Their heart is good ground for what you're going to speak this morning. Holy Spirit, I declare that everyone in this house, I declare that their hearts and their spirit is good ground for your words of life, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yes, do what you know needs to be done, Holy Spirit. I just thank you in advance for how you're going to meet people right where they are, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears you. Lead, Lord. Your servant follows. Our heart is ready. Yes, our heart is ready. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for how you're going to be speaking all across this nation. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Just remain standing a little longer. We're going to read the scripture. Jimmy, could you, could you just close that door, please? We've got Terry back there, so if something goes on, I'm sure he'll let you know, Dexter. Just to kind of keep some sound out. Thank you much. All right. So 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. This is just a quick summary. All I'm going to grab from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 is this. Look at the screen. Fight the good fight of faith. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith. Somebody say fight. 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 Esther, what did you say earlier? That it was a fight, huh? Fight. Yes. Second Timothy 4 verse 7. Look at the screen. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Mm. Woo, let's read that again. Somebody say, I have fought, I have fought. The, good the good fight. Say, I have finished, I have finished. The, course. the course. Say, I have kept, I have kept. the faith. The faith. Woo. Put your Bible down real quick, please. Put your Bible down and put your fist up like this. I know we didn't go to uh, Mayweather classes. I know we didn't go to MMA classes and everything else. You know, just put your fist up like this. And look at the person next to you. And don't punch him. Hold up. <laughs> look at the person next to you and tell them it's a fight. <laughs> tell them it's a fight. Woo, it's a fight. That's the title of the message the Holy Spirit has given me. Say it one more time. Say, it's a, it's a fight. Yes, you may be seated. You may be seated. It's a fight. Woo. Glory to you, Father. Jimmy and Esther over here got a little carried away. They got a little serious. Their eyes even changed. I saw a change in their eyes and their eyebrows. I've never seen that before. Woo, it's a fight. Now, what was Paul talking about, and how is it going to relate to our life? The message has to be practical. It has to be applicable to every area of my life. So as we go through the message, you'll see how it applies to you and how it will strengthen you through the Holy Spirit. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. What did you fight, Paul? And I have finished the course, and I have kept the faith. So let's read about Paul. 
What is he talking about in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 28? Look at what Paul tells us. Paul says, I've been put in prison more than anybody else because of my faith. Do you hear that? Paul says, I've been placed in prison more often than anybody else for my faith. He says, I've been whipped times without number. I've faced death again and again. Oh my gosh, are we beginning to understand why he said I have fought the good fight and I have finished the race and I have kept the faith? Are we beginning to understand why he said that? Verse 24, five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Can we understand why he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Woo! He said, three times I was shipwrecked. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. Verse 26, I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in deserts, on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long enduring many sleepless nights he's coming to the end of his race and he tells Timothy I have fought a good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith verse 27 I have worked hard and long enduring many sleepless nights I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Paul was telling Timothy, it's a fight. It's a fight and I didn't give up. My gosh, I suffered a lot because of my faith, but no matter what came my way, woo, the Holy Spirit strengthened me because I continued to fight. God continued to do his part through the Holy Spirit, and I continued to do mine. He was telling Timothy, you're going to have to man up, you're going to have to put him up, and you're going to have to keep fighting because Satan is not going to leave you alone. Trouble is not going to leave you alone. Circumstances that you don't like, that you don't prefer, are not going to leave you alone. Adversity is not going to leave you alone. And so, Timothy, you're going to have to man up and put him up. And trust that God will do his part. Because I'm telling you, Paul, I'm telling you, Timothy, this is Paul talking to Timothy. I'm telling you, Timothy, that God is faithful. God is faithful. And Paul said, I've been through so much. I've been through so much. But I didn't let anything separate me from my will to fight. Woo! Fight the good fight of faith. My gosh. Somebody say fight. fight. The good fight the good of faith. My gosh, look at this. Determination is when you decide that it's worth it to finish what you started. Woo! Paul said it's worth it to finish this race, this course of faith. Paul said, I'm determined. We read everything that he went through, and he didn't include when he got bit by a viper, and he didn't include the burden that he was begging God to take away. He didn't even include all that. Woo, if there's anybody that knows what it's like to wake up in discomfort and go to sleep in discomfort and still fight the good fight of faith, it's Paul. Woo, if there's anybody that knows what it's like to be dealing with one thing after another and still have to fight the good fight of faith, it's Paul. Woo! And Paul's saying to all of us this morning, it's worth it. It's worth it 
Mm. Determination is when I decide it's worth it for me to finish what I started. We live in a world where many of us, we start something, but we don't finish it. Amen? Amen? And I, I don't know about you, woo, but I want to be known as a young man who wasn't only preaching and serving the Lord in 2018. When 2020 comes around and when 2025 comes around, I want the world to still know Junior Lima is still preaching. Woo! I believe that's your heart too. I believe that's your heart too. I declare that Esther's not just in church on May 20th, 2018, but I declare that in 2025 she's still going to be serving the Lord because she's determined to finish what she started. I declare that 10 years from now, the Seal family will still be growing in wisdom, still be growing in their trust with God. They'll still be amazing parents to their kids, leading them in the faith 10 years from now because I declare that they will be determined to fight the good fight, to finish what they started. I declare that five years from now, this ministry will still be thriving and be a blessing to the community. I declare that five years from now, this ministry is still going to be preaching the gospel strong, still doing what God has anointed us to do because we're determined to keep fighting the good fight of faith. We're determined to finish what we started. Woo! My gosh. Can you say that in your spirit? Because this is what I say to my father. Father, I know that you're proud of me. I know that you're proud of me. Father, but I declare that 10 years from now, you can still count on me. Father, I declare that when I'm 50 years old, I'm still seeking you like when I was 30. Father, I declare that to my very last breath, to my very last breath, you can, count, you can count on me to be an avenue through which your love flows, to be an avenue through which your wisdom flows, to be an avenue through which your peace flows. Woo! Can you say that? Can you say, Lord, you can count on me. Say, I will finish what I started oh yes 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 glory to you father glory to you father yes yes three years from now three years from now this ministry is still going to be going strong five years from now I declare you're still going to be serving the Lord you're still going to be seeking him Oh, yes, Father, 10 years from now, Father, I declare you shall look down and see us with hands lifted up. Woo, because I'm going to man up, and you're going to man up, and you're going to woman up, and we're going to be like Paul. No matter what comes my way, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Woo, do you hear that? Oh, yes, next week you can, you can count on Jody still getting up in the morning and getting dressed and driving to Childress. No matter how stressful the job may be, Father, you can count on me a week from now. I'll be at Childress ISD doing what you've anointed me to do. I'm going to fight. Oh, yeah, I'm going to fight. I'm a warrior. Oh, I'm a warrior for your glory. I may be in my 60s. I may be in my 70s. I may be in my 80s. I may be in my 90s. But Jimmy's still going to be here next week worshiping God through that piano. Woo! Because she's going to finish what she started. Woo! Do you hear this? Woo! Glory to you, Father. I'm reminded of T.D. Jakes. The reason I want to share T.D. Jakes this morning is because if you listen to his interviews and you read his books and you listen to his messages, he reminds me of Paul. He reminds me of everything, all the adversity, all the discomforts, all the burdens that he's had to endure. He shares about how times when he felt like throwing in the towel, he didn't know if he was going to make it another day. On top of so many burdens and responsibilities and distractions and you name it, when his ministry was beginning to just skyrocket, when, when his ministry began to explode, TV ministry and God began to give him a lot of influence. 
His 14-year-old his 14-year-old daughter gets pregnant. So on top of all the adversity, here's a prominent pastor who now has to deal with what the church and with what people are going to say regarding his teenage daughter, 14 years old, getting pregnant. Look at this. Pastoring a church of 30,000 members comes with its own complexities and stresses, but this can be multiplied many times over when your teenage daughter gives the news that she's pregnant. He said, I was shocked, I was crushed, I was emotionally devastated. And watch what he says, and yet there was something down inside of me and in her mother as well that said, we have to rise above the drama. My gosh. Look what he says at the bottom. He says, we got letters, we got blogs, we got stuff that was lies and garbage told about us. We had the press swarming our church. Now, mind you, here's T.D. Jakes, anointed, doing what God is calling him to do, and already and dealing with so much adversity, and his church is growing, and his influence is growing, and in the midst of all that, Daddy, I'm pregnant. Oh, my gosh. He said, we got letters. We got blogs full of lies and garbage told about us. We had the press swarming our church. But he was like Paul. He said, this is a fight. This is a fight. Look what he says regarding his daughter's situation. After expressing his initial feelings of disturbance over the incident, Jake's included that love overrides everything. Mm. It's a fight. I'm already fighting all kinds of stuff, and on top of that, I get this news from my 14-year-old daughter. I'm going to keep fighting this good fight of faith. I'm going to keep being led by love. Look at what he learned to say. Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. Jake said, I looked up to the mountains. Does my strength come from the mountains? He said, no, in the midst of my trouble, my strength comes from God, the one who made the mountains. Woo! Look at him saying, I'm going to continue to fight. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Woo! My gosh. My gosh, do you remember Ephesians 6, 12? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a fight. It's a fight. And sometimes we fight on our knees like this woman. Has anybody learned how to fight on your knees? Woo! If we're going to finish what we started, we're going to have to find a secret place. It can be your closet. It can be a certain room. Wherever your secret place is, if we're going to finish what we started, if 10 years from now I'm still going to be preaching, then I need to learn how to fight on my knees. If I can fight on my knees, I can preach on my feet. Woo! Glory to you, Father. There are different ways to fight. On your knees, you can also fight by just praising and worshiping him. You can just cast your cares on him and put on some worship music and say, Lord, I exalt you, I worship you. Just focus on worshiping him and watch angels go to work. Watch the Holy Spirit go to work. Watch your heavenly Father who loves you beyond the cross, who is, a, who is, who is active in your life beyond the cross. Watch him go to work. Glory to you, Father. We can also fight when we declare God's word and when we declare anything that lines up with his word. As you're going throughout your day and something happens, remember it's a fight, and you can declare something tries to steal your peace, you can say, Holy Spirit, I declare that Jehovah Shalom's peace reigns in my heart and in my spirit, and you keep going. You just declare it. You may not feel something right away, but his word will not return void. My gosh. 
Any kind of news you get regarding any area of your life, speak life over it in Jesus' name and keep walking. That's how we fight. We fight on our knees. We fight when we worship. And we fight when we declare God's word or anything that lines up with his word. Fight. Fight. Yes, yes. You know who's a great example of fighting the good fight? Mm, remaining a servant of love. MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. Woo, look at what he said. Darkness can't drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate can't drive out hate. Only love can do that. Woo! He said, I'm not just fighting for civil rights. I'm fighting this good fight of faith. And until the day I die, Lord, you can count on me that I will believe that only love is the answer. Woo! Woo! Till my very last breath, it doesn't matter who hates me, you can count on me to believe that your love is what makes all things new. That your love is what overcomes evil and darkness. Woo! He said, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Until, until his very last breath. Woo! Martin Luther King Jr. was still believing that through God's love, the white man could become his friend. Woo! He didn't stop. He didn't stop. So I don't know what God has in your life, what he's anointed you to do. I don't know all your business. I don't know what all you got going on. But God gave me this message to tell you that everybody has to fight. It doesn't matter if you're T.D. Jakes. It doesn't matter if you're the most well-known preacher in America. Nobody is above anybody. We all have to fight. How about we keep fighting together? How about we fight together? How about we help each other fight? Woo! It's a fight. It's a fight. Martin Luther King Jr. had to deal with spiritual wickedness in high places just as much as we have to. Do you hear this? Because I know sometimes we look at people that God has given a lot of influence to. And we say, if only I understood what they understood. If only I knew what they knew. If only I was as close to God as they were. Let me tell you something. They fight just as much as you have to fight. You hear me? It's a fight. Don't ever exalt a minister above you. Never. I have to fight just as much as you do. Look at what he said. He said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Look at what he's saying. Look at what he's saying. If you can't serve the Lord flying, then serve the Lord running. If you can't continue this fight running, then continue this race walking. If you can't continue on this course walking, then continue crawling. But by all means, keep fighting. Keep moving forward. Do you see this? Woo, I'm going to fight this good fight of faith. Sometimes I'm going to feel like I'm flying in this fight. Sometimes I'm going to feel like I'm running in this fight. Sometimes I'm going to feel like I'm crawling in this fight. But no matter how I feel, I'm going to fight. Woo! No matter how I feel, I'm going to keep moving forward. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sometimes Jody might be crawling at school, but she's not giving up. Woo! Sometimes we may be tippy-toeing into our future, but Stephen ain't giving up. It's a fight. Woo! Glory to you, Father. My gosh. So, this slide represents her fighting on her knees. Let me show you how Ines Andrews fought. She fought with worship. Woo! Look at her lyrics. She wrote this song. She already passed away, but look at this song that she wrote. I've been working for Jesus a long time. And then the choir behind her sings, I'm not tired yet. I've been running for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. 
I've been singing for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. Woo! She sang this till the day that she went on to be with the Lord. Look at her saying, I've been serving the Lord, and I'm not going to stop. I've been singing for a long time, and I'm not going to stop. I've been being used by God. I've been chasing after him. I've been following the Christ. And at 83 years old, she was still saying, I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired yet. Oh, man. Been running by day and praying by night. I ain't tired yet. She may have been weary physically, but in her spirit, she was declaring, I'm not tired yet. I'm going to finish this course. I'm going to fight the good fight till my last breath. I'm going to be able to say I kept the faith. Woo! Her spirit was still declaring, I'm not tired yet. I've been living for him a long time. Look, it's been an uphill journey, but I'm on my way. I'm not tired yet. Sometimes my burdens press me down. Sometimes I hasten to higher ground. Sometimes I can hardly see my way. So I get on my knees and I begin to pray. And I declare, I'm not tired yet. Woo! My gosh. My gosh, my gosh. And she continues to say, running for Jesus. And the choir behind her says, running for Jesus. Should I lay aside? Should I just give up and end up awakened in sin? No, she says, the race set before me. I'll keep running. She said, I've got to run. Woo, I've got to run. My gosh, my gosh. Mm, look what she says. I got a story to tell. So I'm going to keep moving forward. I got to tell somebody. Ooh, I got to tell somebody about King Jesus, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost. I want to tell somebody that the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I'm not tired yet. Oh, my gosh. Do you hear this? I can just sense her spirit declaring all this. Woo! My gosh. What if we do that in the morning? What if we, and, and throughout the day, Woo! What if we just say, I know this is a fight, but I'm going to keep shining a light for your glory, Lord. I'm not tired yet. And it's Wednesday. I'm going to keep being the salt of the earth. I'm going to keep allowing your love to be expressed through me, Father. I'm not tired yet. Woo! Are you, are you receiving this? Yeah. Woo! In John chapter 6, Jesus was teaching without much clarity. And instead of the people who were listening to him, instead of them asking Jesus, what do you mean I eat your flesh and I drink your blood? Instead of asking him to explain, they began to walk away from Jesus. They walked away from the race. They walked away from the fight. They didn't keep the faith. They didn't want to run the course anymore. And look at what Jesus tells his disciples. Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? And Simon Peter said, Lord, who do we turn to? You're the one who has words of eternal life. And we have come to believe that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And so Jesus says to people who are getting weary, are you going to walk away too? And we can respond by saying, who do I turn to? We can respond like Peter, who do I turn to? If you're the one who has words of eternal life, who do I turn to? If you're the one who gives peace like no other, wisdom and trouble like no other, who do I turn to? Let me ask you, who will you turn to? Who else bows to the name of Jesus? What other God? What other God is there for you to follow? Hmm. Hmm. Who will you turn to? Is there another God? Is there another God that has power over sin? Is there another God who has power over death? Is there another God 
that can deliver you from demonic oppression? Is there another God that the kingdom of darkness bows to? Is there another God? Woo! So the moment you start feeling weary, you can say, who do I turn to? Nobody. Nobody else. Who do I turn to? If you're the one who has words of eternal life. Sometimes we may get tired. Listen, when you start feeling tired regarding your faith, check this out. Don't fight the weariness. Just understand. Understand it's normal to get tired. And then you got to remind yourself, it's a fight. That's why I feel this way. That's why I feel tempted in, in this manner, because it's a fight. So don't fight the feeling. Don't fight the feeling. It's going to come. You're going to get tired at times. You're going to get tired. Just let that feeling come. It's, that feeling comes to pass. It doesn't come to stay. It's a fight. Let it come. Let it come. Don't fight it. And then just worship. Worship. And make declarations like this woman, the song that she wrote. And get on your knees and say, Lord, I cast my cares on you. Mm. Does anybody know what it's like to feel tired, to feel weary? I know what that's like. I know what that's like. But then I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, Junior, I know why you feel that way. He said, you know what, T.D. Jakes has felt that way too. And you know what, T.D. Jakes in the future will feel that way again. And you know what, Kaylin's going to feel that way again in the future. And you know, all these people that, that, that the Holy Spirit has given a lot of influence to, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, they're going to feel that way sooner or later again. Junior, in the future, you're going to feel that again. And he said, you know what, let me tell you a secret. It's because it's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. So don't believe the lie that you're dying spiritually. You're just in a fight. Does this make sense? Do not believe the lie that you are dying spiritually. You're not. You're in a fight. And sometimes you're going to be in this fight running and flying, and sometimes you're going to be in this fight crawling and tippy-toeing. Do you see this? It's a fight. But I declare that however it is that we make it to the end, whether we make it flying or we make it crawling, and I believe it's going to be a mixture I declare we're going to finish. You know why? You know why? Because Jesus, Jesus kept moving forward and said, it is finished. You know what? Now it's my turn to get to the end of my life and be able to say, I finished. I finished. Jesus, you finished for me. Oh, now it's Paducah's turn to finish for you. Oh, you finished for me, Lord. You finished for me in every area of my life, in, a, in, a, in regards to my finances, my health, my emotional being, everything about me on the cross. You said it is finished. And so I'm going to continue placing all of that in your hands. And when I get to my last breath, I want my last words to be the same words as Jesus. Woo, how would you like that? The same last words that Jesus had, I want to be able to say those words too. Father, mm, I kept the faith. I ran my course. Father, I finished. Woo, Father, I finished. Who wants to be able to say that? Father, I finished. My gosh, my gosh. Woo, glory to you, Father. Right there where you are. Right there where you are. We're about to praise God to this song. We're about to fight through this song. Woo. And listen, I just want you to, I just want you to receive this song in your spirit. If you want to clap with me, clap with me. If you want to sing along, the, the lyrics will be on the screen. But this is our way of corporately saying to the devil, I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel. I understand that it's a fight. I may just be crawling right now, devil, but watch out because I'm going to start flying later on. And it's going to be back and forth. It's okay. It's a fight. It's a fight.
Stop trying to always be on top. That's one of our problems. We always want everything to feel good. But let me tell you something. Serving God doesn't always feel the way you want it to feel. Paul can tell you this. Do you think Paul felt like he was flying? Not all the time. I bet you when he was laying hands on the sick, he felt like he was flying. But when he was going through so much trouble, I bet you he felt like he was crawling. But he said, it's a fight. I won't stop. Do you think T.D. Jakes always feels like he's flying? No. You're not always going to feel like you're flying. But crawl. Whatever you do, crawl and move forward. Woo! Are you ready? Are you ready? My gosh. Glory to you, Father. Glory to you, Father. Glory to you, Father. Glory to you, Father. Look at these lyrics. Hey, put your hands with me. Come on. This is our way of saying, I'm a fighter to fight. Been working for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. Been running for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. Come on. Been working for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet.
My gosh. That's our way of saying, I will not stop serving. I will not stop making myself available to you, Lord. Woo, I know I live in a broken world, in a crazy world, in a corrupt world. Woo, but I'm not tired yet. My gosh, I'm going to keep fighting the good fight of faith. I'm going to run my course. And my last words will be like Jesus. I finished. I finished. Mm, glory to you, Father. If you're watching through the broadcast and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm just going to ask everyone to repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, I believe you died for my sin and you resurrected. Say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Say, Holy Spirit, reign in me, rule in me, guide me in Jesus' name. Yes, if you prayed that prayer, you got saved just like I did. When I was 16 years old, I got saved through TV. If you don't have a church home, please come and visit us 1045 every Sunday, 1901 Zula Street. Y'all don't give addresses here in a small town. Y'all just say, in that house next to that other house. <laughs> or just go, go find, go find a church, okay? Get plugged in, get plugged in.